In this video, you will learn how to integrate MOOCsoft, which is an artificial intelligence operations platform for observability and incident response with Mattermost. My name is Simran. Let's get started. First off, an account on MOOCsoft is necessary. Navigate to www.moocsoft.com and then click on the pricing tab. There is a free plan for MOOCsoft, but it requires you to sign up for a free trial of the complete product first. After inputting your contact information, you'll get an email through which you'll activate your trial and set a password for your account. Afterwards, you can sign into the application normally. You're going to use MOOCsoft to analyze some fake network data logs and then send alert notifications into a Mattermost channel. You will need to set up a dummy environment first that will continuously generate a stream of logs and then have this data ingested into MOOCsoft using a collector. A collector is an agent that collects metrics and detects anomalies on Linux, Windows, and macOS servers. This information then gets sent to MOOCsoft. The project that will generate some synthetic logs for this demonstration is the fake Apache log generator. You'll want to have these logs in a Docker container. Docker is a software product for building, running, and managing containers on servers. If you don't have Docker set up on your machine yet, check out the Docker Engine installation overview in the Docker documentation. Once Docker is installed and running, clone the fake Apache log generator repository to your local machine. Then, in a terminal, navigate into the repository folder and run the following command in that terminal to build a Docker image. After the Docker image is built, Run the following command in the same terminal to install all the dependencies and get your server started. The dash n argument is for specifying the number of lines to create. Using zero will generate an infinite amount of lines. The dash s argument is for specifying the time in seconds between lines. One was given for this argument, so every one second a new line will be generated and added to the logs. To verify whether the Docker container is running, you can click the Containers tab inside of the Docker desktop application and look at the status column on the containers page. To see the fake logs being generated, click on the name of your Docker container. Now, the next step is to install a collector in the Docker container. Back in your browser, in the MOOCsoft tab, click on the Integrations button on the left sidebar, then select the Ingestion Services tab. On this Ingestion Services page, click on the Collectors tab. In the Collectors section, navigate to the Installation tab. On the left-hand sidebar, Select the operating system you have on your machine. Copy the installation script. Open up a different terminal inside the Docker container, either through the Docker desktop application or by running this command in the first terminal you used when building the Docker image. Paste the installation script for the collector from MOOCsoft into the terminal inside the Docker container. This should include your own MOOCsoft API key. If the collector has been installed, you'll see this message in your terminal, running collector. After verifying that the collector is running, return back to MOOCsoft in your browser. Click on the Incidents button on the left sidebar. There will be three other tabs, Incidents, Alerts, and Metrics. Select the Alerts tab. 
Mooksoft performs noise reduction by deduplicating new events that match previously ingested events. In this case, the events are the fake network logs. Similar events are also aggregated. The event count column shows the number of events deduplicated into one alert. The severity column indicates how urgently the alert needs attention. Severity levels are assigned using a dynamic thresholding mechanism. Mooksoft learns from the data patterns. Clicking on an alert will show you which events have been deduplicated, plus the source, time, and description of the events. Alerts also get clustered into incidents. Mooksoft correlates alerts based on their relatedness. This relatedness can be determined by similar fields in the data. To see which alerts are grouped into incidents, click on the Incidents button on the left sidebar, then click the Incidents tab. While Mooksoft automatically performs the correlation of alerts without any configuration, you can also create your own rules to make a custom correlation definition. Instead of looking at Moogsoft directly for alert or incident information, you can send notifications about these situations to Mattermost. First, you need to create an incoming webhook on the Mattermost end. Make sure you are signed into the workspace of your choice on Mattermost. You can create a new channel in Mattermost to house the notifications or use an existing channel. If you're a system admin and interested in customizing the username and profile picture of your incoming webhook, go to System Console, then Integrations, then the Integration Management section. Select True for Enable Integrations to Override Usernames and Enable Integrations to Override Profile Picture icons. Then select Save. Not enabling these two features means that the webhook will default to the username and icon of whoever set the webhook. Next, go to the product menu, then select Integrations, and then select Incoming Webhook. If you don't have the Integrations option, Incoming Webhooks may not be enabled on your Mattermost server or may be disabled for non-admins. They can be enabled by a system admin in the system console. Once incoming webhooks are enabled, continue with the following steps. Select Add Incoming Webhook and add a name and description for the webhook. The description can be up to 500 characters. Set the channel to receive the webhook payloads at. You can also optionally lock the webhook to the channel you picked. Lastly, you can provide a username and a profile picture for the webhook. If you don't fill out these fields, the username webhook and the standard webhook icon will be used, instead of your username and picture. When you're finished, save or add the webhook. You should get a success message that provides a webhook endpoint in the following format https colon slash slash your mattermost server dot com slash hooks slash a generated key. Like your Moogsoft API key, treat the webhook endpoint as a secret because anyone who has it will be able to post messages in your Mattermost instance. Copy this webhook endpoint. Next you need to create an outbound webhook in Moogsoft. Back in your browser in the Moogsoft tab, click on Integrations in the left-hand side and select Outbound Integrations. In the list that appears, select Webhook. Click the Add a Webhook button. There are some fields that need to be filled out. The first field section is called Name and Scope. Here, you can pick out a name for the outbound integration and select if you want to send out incident or alert data. For demonstration purposes, select the alert data option. There's also an optional filter to add conditions to control which sorts of alerts or incidents you want forwarded. You can preview what gets returned with your filter by clicking the trigger preview button 
and if you're satisfied with the result, click apply on the preview window to apply the filter. The second section is called create operation and HTTP configuration. Set the request method as post. Then paste the Mattermost webhook endpoint you received into the URL field. From the authorization dropdown, select no auth. Lastly, for the headers, all you need is the content type application JSON, which should be defined by default. The third section is called payload body for create operation. This is where you define the payload to send when an incident or an alert is created, as in what kind of information from the alert or the incident do you want to send and in what format. This is the basis of the messages that will get sent in Mattermost. You can use the input assistant to help define the key value pairs in the payload or directly change what you want in the key value editor. The payload is in the form of a JSON object. For now, keep the default payload, except change the message key to be text instead, and remove the timestamp key value pair. For a full list of accepted parameters for Mattermost, check out the incoming Webhooks developer documentation page. The payload also doesn't need to be sent as a list, so this option can remain off. The fourth section is called Map the Response to Payload, External Name and ID. From the External Webhook Target dropdown, select None. The fifth section is called Update Notifications. This is similar to the Create Operation and HTTP Configuration section in that there are fields where you can specify the request method and the URL for the operation, but other than that you can toggle if you want to be notified when alerts or incidents change. Under the Triggers section, you can also select conditions that will trigger these update notifications. For demonstration purposes, enable this and select Severity Increased and Status Changed as triggers. The last section is called Payload Body for Update Operation. This section looks similar to the Payload Body for Create Operation section. Keep the default payload, but again change the message key to be text instead, remove the timestamp section, and finally change the value of the text key to end with the word updated, so that there is a slight difference between alert messages and update messages. Now that all of the necessary fields have been filled out to create the outbound webhook, it's important to test the webhook before saving it. Click the test button in the upper right corner of the outbound webhook panel. If everything is correct, then all status codes in the validation results section should be 200, and denote that each specific URL is valid. The response for the create and update operations should also have a status code of 200 with a returned body value of OK. You can finish off this outbound webhook creation process by clicking save in the upper right corner of the outbound webhook panel. Finally, it's time to check out the integration in action. Head into Mattermost and go to the channel you dedicated to receive the MOOCsoft notifications. You should be seeing messages come in giving details about alerts created, which include the alert ID number, the severity of the alert, and the alert description. The notifications right now look pretty basic but you can customize them further by not only changing the sort of alert or incident fields you get from MooSoft, but also by changing the formatting of the messages themselves. Mattermost has an incoming webhook parameter called Attachments that allows for richer text. Attachments is a required parameter for an incoming webhook if the text parameter is not set. Let's head back to MOOCsoft and edit the payloads for the create and update operations of the outbound webhook. For example, 
Let's create a message attachment where there is an orange border and split the alert description, severity, and ID into separate fields. First, specify some fallback text. The fallback option is required for message attachments because it is used in notifications and for clients that do not support formatted text. Next, set the color option, which can be any hex code as a string. Because the plan is for an orange border, use the hex code hashtag FC9803. Finally, display the description, issue number ID, and the severity information in a table format using an optional array called fields. For each field, you need to give it a title, set the text contents, and then also specify whether the value of the field will be short or long. After changing the payloads, test the outbound webhook and then save the webhook. Returning to Mattermost, the messages that are now being sent are formatted more nicely. Now you know how to receive notifications on alerts and incidents from Moogsoft in Mattermost and have been introduced to incoming webhooks in Mattermost. Thanks for watching.